Cody Alexander, creator of Match Quarters, the author of five books about defense. He's a disciple of Phil Bennett, former Baylor defensive coordinator, and now, of course, at North Texas. Coached in high school at Walks at Life Walks at Hatchie, Mesquite Horn, Midlothian, Lovejoy, and also at Berkner High School in Richardson. Here's a qu- I saw this tweet. Cody's going to join us in a moment about Dave Arend. I saw this tweet from him yesterday. The Texas High School Football Coaches Association, the convention began in San Antonio. All 12 FBS head coaches were in attendance, or all 12 coaches were in attendance, but also some spoke. Instead of giving coaches a BS 20-minute talk on a scheme, Dave Aranda spoke about his struggles to be his authentic self and how as coaches we tend to lose ourselves in the game. Don't make the game an escape. I'm glad Dave Aranda, Coach Aranda, is in Texas and at Baylor. And Cody Alexander, matchquarters.com, the art of X, joins us. Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports with Craig and David Smoke. Cody, did you did, did you had you heard him talk before, and it just kind of blew you away when you heard him yesterday? Yeah, I've heard Coach speak multiple times. Obviously, I've visited practice a few times. Um, but just to have a coach be that raw emotionally, especially at his level, and especially at that, like with an FBS Power 5 coach in a Big 12 conference, to be able to speak like that, it just kind of was, I think, for a lot of coaches around, it was it was pretty eye-opening and, and really cool. He's getting that reputation, is he not? Yeah, I think, you know, you from just even listening to him speak on multiple occasions, just he's very intellectual. He's very, you know, and he even says he's an introvert. He's very inward thinking. And to me, I think that that's a refreshing thing at the coaching level and especially in a profession that a lot of times is seen as like a zero sum game where there's an obvious winner and obvious loser. And to have somebody get out there and be that raw about, you know, the struggles they had, especially in that, that 2020 season where, where they weren't winning a lot. And, and it kind of puts perspective on how successful they were this year. Cody also uh, go ahead and tell everybody if you, if you will about match quarters, where that came from, and kind of obviously coaches are catching on to it as well. Yeah, I was obviously um, at Baylor under Coach Bennett, who y'all are pretty familiar with. And when I left the college game, I needed kind of a creative outlet, and I've always wanted to write. Um, and so I started writing about the one thing that I really enjoy, which is football, and it just kind of has grown from there. Like you mentioned earlier, I've written – several books on defense. Um, I have a sub stack. Um, I've kind of, I've been in most of the national publications either as a quoted or has worked research for most of the national publications. And it just kind of has grown to a point where it's kind of come its own brand. And uh, I talk about defensive football, which is unique. Most people talk about offense. So it's been a lot of fun kind of growing that and getting to know coaches all around the country and really all, all around the world. Actually, I just, I just got back from England doing a convention over there. All right. So I talked by text with Phil Bennett. He actually left me a voicemail. Sorry. Sorry, man. Yeah, no, this is going I, so, so well. You know, but... where, you know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. um, no, it, it, I'll, I'll start with the complimentary part. He goes, he's smart, whip, smart ass whip, picks up super fast. He's a sponge. Uh, but he did say this. If the economy, if the economy doesn't get better, I'm going to sue him for taking all of my stuff and earning money doing it. <laughs> yes. That, that's a, I've heard that uh, on multiple occasions, so that's no, it's nothing new to me. Every time I see him, he reminds me that I owe, I owe him money. <laughs> what was he like to you as a GA? I, I couldn't have asked for a better experience. And, in fact, I've, I've told him on multiple occasions, you know, I get asked a lot, why am I not in college? Why don't, why haven't I come back? Um, obviously it has to be the right fit. I've got, I've got kids and a wife I got to take care of. But, but the other thing too, is I, I truly enjoyed working for coach Bennett. Um, you talk to anybody that's worked under him. It's very intense when the football is on the standard is a standard. He doesn't deviate from it. And he remembers everything that you tell him. And so you better get your answers right the first time. And I think it really taught me how to be a professional. It really taught me how to work under, uh, under stress. Um, but at the end of the day, when 
we were all outside of football and it was about life and it was about being, being a human being. Coach Bennett took care of me, took care of my family, and I'm forever indebted to Coach Bennett. Cody, all right, let's discuss Matt's quarters. That's a Bennett disciple. What do you learn from Aranda? Because he's kind of – and I Travis Roeder, who's a, a football analyst for us on our site, said Aranda's sort of like a greatest, hits, a greatest hits album. He's managed to master a few key concepts from multiple styles of defense. What did you want to learn from him if he did dive into the X's and O's? My biggest thing that I think that he's been ahead of the curve on um, – for a long time has been running even front looks, which is like your four, your typical four down looks, but running odd spacing behind it, meaning that you're getting into closed B gaps. So most people know Dave Aranda as kind of the tight front guru. Uh, I know Saban kind of tried to come in there with the mint front stuff, but really, really Aranda is the one that has been running that for forever. And it's kind of the, the him and him and Ron Roberts kind of have developed that system, but being able to give a four down presentation and change that post snap with his creepers and sins, which is really what has become kind of the staple of his system and giving kind of that odd, what's called odd spacing, which is again, changing it from an even front to an odd front post snap. I think that's what, has really allowed him to be kind of in the forefront of college football for a long time. And we're really just seeing that now that he's kind of, now he's a head coach and he's kind of able to do it his way at Baylor. Uh, this is also from Travis because he was excited that you're coming on. And I think he has actually maybe been in contact with you before or watched what you do. Every yep. football coach has an inherent tension between wanting to add more to the playbook and toolkit versus what they can actually teach their cl- the kids. How has right. Aranda managed to be so multiple and still excellent at everything as opposed to being a jack-of-all-trades and a master of none? He's not deviating from his base. And even though it looks like that to the naked eye or to the casual fan where, oh, well, it, this is a completely different structure and the picture looks different, uh, conceptually – schematically and then the way that they they teach everything and how it fits on game day really is not deviating much from his initial what they day one install in type four so even though it looks like it's a a four down presentation but they're doing certain things you're actually getting the same fits you're getting the same structures and when you teach things and he did such a great like everything i pedagogy which is the art of teaching and how the science of teaching how you do things like everything is so layered out and he's done it for such a long time that he's kind of created this this ecosystem where he's able to teach these kids how to do it and develop them and be able to look multiple by keeping things simple uh, so it looks multiple to the offense it looks confusing to the offense but yet in reality when it comes down to the players they're not really doing anything conceptually different than they learned on day one. So what he's done at Baylor, and as you mentioned, 2020 was a disaster in many, many ways, and they changed up and he made some decisions. But what they're doing defensively, this appears to be, this is no, like you said, this is what he and Roberts have done. This seems to be that that's their brand. That's who they will be. And your thoughts about how good they were last year. Rule had a hell of a defense in 19, but last year's defense sure was very special. Right. And those two defenses were completely different. And yep. uh, just even just structurally, how it was, um, it just snow was much more blitz, uh, blitzing, uh, applying like actual pressure, where Aranda is more what I call passive pressure. Uh, we're, we're sending pressure, we're pressuring you by how we align. We're pressuring you with post-snap movement. We're pressuring you with coverage. We're pressuring you with their creepers and sims, which is essentially just a four-man rush, which on paper that you're like, okay, well, the offensive line should be able to pick that up. But Aranda has stated in multiple different occasions about how when he's designing this this defense is that it's kind of a pinpoint. It's a scalpel. Not it's, This isn't a hammer. This isn't – we're not just kind of a, a machine gunning around and hopefully one of the bullets will catch – this is pinpoint scalpel. We know exactly what we're doing. We're trying to attack it and we're trying to give that pressure. And the reason why I say passive pressure 
and using that oxymoron is because though they're applying pressure, they're doing it with pinpoint accuracy because they know exactly what they're trying to do and what concept they're trying to attack, yet they're keeping that seven-man distribution on the back end, which is a traditional seven-man route distribution, whether it's cover three, cover two, cover four, whatever they're running on the back end, they're not losing any coverage integrity when they're actually applying pressure. So it's kind of this illusion uh, that is really effective, and you're seeing it being adopted um, from the top coaches in college football and even at the NFL. Cody, uh, I, I'm a novice when it comes to this X's and O stuff, so I've enjoyed just sitting back and, and listening to you talk. I was curious uh, from one standpoint, though, uh, when you're replacing a bunch of ultra-talented veteran players uh, like Baylor's defense will be doing, guys that were in the system for four and five years, with what they do, how replaceable, so to speak, uh, are guys, how much does the talent matter in the long run in terms of executing what they do? Yeah, I, this is the kind of the coaching paradox is that scheme is really important. Uh, it's really important in terms of establishing a culture and developing talent and making sure you're doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, I mean, it, the best players win games. And I think the loss of Petrie is going to be big. He was such a utility player and he was able to do a lot of things and answer a lot of things uh, problems essentially for Baylor. That's going to be something to look into. Um, but yeah, when you lose a ton of production, um, you're going to, you're obviously going to take a step back. The one thing that I will say about, I think Aranda has kind of found in Baylor what he found in Wisconsin, which is your, it's about the development of players. It's about really recruiting the right kids that want to come to Baylor, that want to come to that that area and it's about being intelligent about the way they do things and teaching is important um and so to me i feel like there may be a step back but you're going to continuously see growth i think that they're on the right track and he's he's been proven at every place that he's he's been at that he's going to find the right way and he's i feel like he's got the staff staff to do it here's on the chat room chaffee city usa he aranda found out how to combat the spread with single gap responsibility right i think in terms of that too like yes it, it is single gap but a lot of it with the back with the backers they are actually reading they're reading it's a little bit more advanced than just hitting your gap um it's a little bit more fluid than that um but he him being able to switch in and out of odd and even spacing. I mean, even last year they were a big under front team, which would have been very similar to what coach Bennett was doing uh, towards the end of his tenure here at Baylor with the, with the, what he called Oki. Um, it, they ran a little bit more of that last year, just because they had two really good linebackers and they had a great overhang. And so mm -hmm. keeping it simple for them, that, that made a lot more sense than just kind of in 2020 doing a lot of blitzes and movements and other things like that to try and try and create havoc. Um, when you have a lot of talent, you tend to be more of a base defense. I mean, you go and you look at uh, any of the blitz rates, most of the time uh, the best defenses are somewhere in the middle to the bottom third. Uh, they're not blitzing a ton of times, and it's more more or less they're focusing on fitting the formation and doing the correct things and, and fitting it correctly. When you look at who they had and who's gone, Petrie, JT Woods, the ball hawking secondary, obviously with uh, Terrell Bernard. Uh, when you look at those who left, who will they miss the most? I I truly think Petrie will be – I think the modern game anymore, uh, especially now, where we are in the present, that nickel, that overhang to the passing strength is such a crucial piece. Um, I do agree JT, losing JT Woods is something that, that is uh, – especially a versatile safety that can play down and play back, but that's why he got drafted – uh, where he got drafted in, in L.A. Um, but I think losing Petrie, you know, there was a conversation I had with a coach on staff. I was like, you know, you guys are really blitzing him a lot. And he was like, well, yeah, haven't you watched him play? Why would we not want him near the box and making plays? So, I mean, when you have a guy like that that is kind of a jack of all trades and he's great at almost everything, he can cover man coverage, he can blitz if you want him to, um, he's cerebral and can call, call the defense at, at the same time. I, I feel like that they've got to find that field overhang and they need to find it early in order to kind of c create that momentum that they had last year on defense. All right. Thank you. You got anything else? Yeah. I'm just, I'm, again, I just, I'm enjoying listening to all this. Uh, Cody, I, I asked Randa last week kind of just what he's been checking out film wise uh, this offseason, what he's been learning from. He mentioned Georgia and five man fronts and things like that with his. 
Uh, I think he uh, there's an NFL team he mentioned as well. It might have been the Buccaneers. Uh, it was, that, it yeah, was Tampa Bay. Buccaneers. Yeah. Those were a couple of the, the things in particular he'd been watching. What are you expecting with this defensive line and the depth that they have with all of the, the players from last year returning, but also the addition of Jackson Player? And even that comment about him and, and five-man fronts and looking at that, do you expect uh, that D-line to kind of drive the way this year and, and maybe change the way some things look? Yes, uh, Talk going in more depth on what he was talking about with those five man fronts and five man pressures. It, the reason why he's watching Georgia is because of the dominant defensive line and then all the five man pressures they ran. Georgia was a simulated pressure defense the year before, and then this year they were more of a kind of a sit and get in the in the front because they had. I mean, they just had dudes. Obviously, if you watch the NFL draft, you you kind of noticed that it was a, a lot of Georgia defensive linemen going off early. But what they were in and, and their and their box linebackers. So their front six was able to really take advantage of the front five. And what you do with five man fronts and even some of these five man pressures is you are creating one on one opportunities for your defenders. So if you know you have a kid that's really talented and can most likely win one on ones, you want to get him in an advantageous situation, whether it's on early downs fitting the run or it's later in downs on longer yardages, uh, getting, a, getting a good pass rush, putting them in one-on-one -on -one situations, that makes sense. You go watch the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are very, very much blitz-heavy. They were a little bit different this year. They were more four-down, uh, kind of two-shell, kind of fit what – kind of a coach Aranda and, and, and coach Roberts have done for a long time. So it makes sense that he would mention those two teams. Do I think you're going to see uh, a, a wholesale change into kind of what the, the Fangio Staley system, primarily Staley with the five, one looks. Um, I don't know. They did that a little bit last year, um, but you would really have to have five solid individuals on the front that you felt really good about. Um, but if you want to kind of what I feel like is more or less with what you saw with Georgia and the Buccaneers, which is a lot of five man pressures, creating one on ones and then playing kind of covered cover one in the back end. When you have young DBs, it's really easy. And especially young DBs that are talented that can play man coverage. It's easy. to It's a lot easier to just kind of play cover one behind those five man pressures than it is to kind of create all these coverage rotations and other things where they have to think. Cody, again, it's uh, matchquarters.com. You, you can tell. He is absolutely all juiced up over the X's and O's of what he's doing and also the fact he had a chance to listen again to Dave Aranda down and in San Antonio. Ron Roberts had a really nice follow-up on your tweet as well, I noticed. Yeah, so did. you're talking about uh, you know Dave Aranda, the way he's talking, and, and Ron Roberts, he's challenging every stereotype of what's uh, what a leader needs to be at the Power 5 level, cutting edge and doing it his own way. So I thought that was pretty cool too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Coach Roberts has been good to me, and I appreciate Coach Roberts. Yeah. Cody, we might get you back on again once the season begins just to kind of help kind of look at it in your perspective of, of what they're doing with this uh, newer version of some of those who are back and also the younger players as well. Cody Alexander, you can follow him if you want on Twitter. It's great. The, again, the website is matchquarters.com. Uh, He's the creator of that. Also the host of Art of the X Show. He's written books, five books on defense, the, T-H-E underscore, coach underscore A. And it's great to have Cody Alexander.